Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fraser Field on a misty, damp, cloudy, bleak day here. The weather was great leading up to the start of the season. Now the season starts, and everybody is bundled up and ice cold and like playing in a refrigerator. This is non league starting off for Lynn Classical, taking on Mask and Armit. Mike Shukowski back in charge of Lint Glasgow, one of the deans of the Northeastern Conference coaching staff. Been around as long or longer than most. Does an excellent job with the Rams. He's run into a little bit of a snag this year. David Bernard, who figured to be his ace pitcher on the mound, is out for the season. He got hurt in football and had uh, a knee or a leg oper operation injury. He's not going to be able to play this year, but he's a great, great kid. He's in uniform down on the on the field. He's at every practice. He roots for his team. He's a terrific young man. And they have another one, Aaron O'Connor, who got a lot of playing time last year. Has got a back problem, and he's out as well. So they are... Uh, really hurting. One of the deans of the coaches on the other side, T.J. Burrill from Masco. He's been at Masco for a while. He was at Swampscott. Brett Buckland's on the mound for Classical as this is their opening game of the season. We started the season off with St. Mary's baseball and softball, and that weather was awful as well. And now we're right back in the soup. We're hoping we'll get this one in, that the rains won't come. It's supposed to rain later, but it rained during the day. The rain kind of stopped, and then it missed couple of drops here and there. And now it's just cold and the wind is blowing and the fans, there's still a few fans here on both sides, but they're bundled up and it is cold. Will Hunter, the pitcher for Masco, will be on the mound, or will be in the bass box, excuse me. He's a veteran from past wars that Masconom has had. They're a perennial tournament team. Up and away for a ball. The first pitch uh, from Brett Buckland. The other part of the battery is Nico Galizzi. Good pitch, gets the outside corner for a strike. High for a ball. Masking armor from the Cape Ann League. Classical obviously from the Northeastern Conference. In for a strike. So Hunter has worked the count two and two. He hasn't swung the bat yet. He's taken four pitches. Buckland will deliver the two two pitch. And that's down and away. Galizzi with a nice stop. And the count goes full. This is down and in. So Hunter draws a walk. One on, nobody out here in the top of the first. Aaron Zenas, the shortstop, will be the hitter.
pumping away for a ball. You might be able to see on your TVs at home, the netting out in front is all over the place. They never could, in the past, hit a ball straight back into the press box. Now the foul ball can come right back in. The netting is all blown down and tangled up and hanging everywhere. And there's also big pieces of cement falling off the overhang. They've got a couple, at least one section, actually part of two sections cordoned off because there's stuff falling down. They're going to have to do a lot of work here. High for a ball, taking off. Out at second base, they overslid the bag. Finnegan made the tag. Hunter stole second. He had it stolen, and he overslid the bag, and Finnegan very alertly put the tag on him. So the play goes two to four. So instead of having a runner in scoring position with nobody out, it's nobody on with one out. Buckland likes to pitch from the stretch. Chase that high fastball. So instead of 3-0, and oh, it's 2-1. and one. In for a strike. So both hitters, he fell behind. 2-0, and oh, came back to even at 2-2. Two and two. He wound up walking Hunter. Swing and a miss. Looked like he took something off the curveball. And he gets Zenus out in front. So two way for Pat Costigan, the catcher, hitting from the left side. Down and in for a ball. A couple of familiar faces from last year. Names you might recall if you watched classical baseball last year. Jared DeFilippo with shortstop. Brett Buckland on the mound. Deshaun Anderson at third. Aiden Dowell at first. Kyle Durant in center field. Hit on the ground to second base. Finnegan makes his second play of the inning. So even though he walks a batter, Buckland only faces three in the top of the first inning. And we'll move into the bottom half of the first inning. For Classical, it'll be the catcher. Nico Galizzi leading off. Jared Filippo will play short and bat second. Pitching and batting third, Brett Buckland. The third baseman, Deshaun Anderson, will hit number four. Batting fifth and playing first base, Aiden Dowell. DHing for the right fielder, James Wilkins, is Nathaniel Alman Dora, Dora's, Dora's, or Dara's. Alman Dara's or Alman Dora's. Hopefully I'll say it three three ways and get it right once. The, the left fielder, Brendan Lannon, will hit number seven. Hitting eighth is the second baseman, Kyle Finnegan. And bring up the tail end of the batting order is the center fielder, Kyle Durant. We mentioned Mike Zakowski, the head guy. Ricky Mayette is able assistant, has been around for a long time. I mentioned Will Hunter on the mound. Had a great year last year for Masco. And they're going to rely heavily on him in the KPN League.
game started a lot later than it normally would have. Mascot, Robert, the baseball team, and they told me the lacrosse team were both waiting for the buses to show up. They were supposed to be there a quarter of three, they didn't show up till 3.30 to get them here for a four o'clock game. And then everybody was here, and we were wondering if we are gonna have any umpires. They finally showed up. So, no such thing as starting at four o'clock. So Nico Galizzi will step in and he'll get Glasgow's offense started in Foul out of play. Down that grassy knoll behind first base. Pitching wide for a ball. One ball, one strike. Good curveball. And Galizzi backing away broke dead center. And it's one ball and two strikes. Hit foul again. Off to that right side. The one two pitch. High and tight. Swing and a miss. Hunt the pictures for a strikeout for the 2019 season, leading off the first. Jared D. Philip or the shortstop will be the hitter. Hit foul back up in the seats. Over the Masco dugout. We start now, we'll go right up until the 24th and 25th of May, which will be the annual Clancy Tournament here at Fraser Field. Swing and a miss, good fastball. English Classical St. Mary's and North Reading. Swing and a miss again. Pretty good start for Hunter. Two swinging strikeouts. Brett Buckland, the pitcher, will be the hitter. Little off speed curveball bites the inside corner. High for a ball. Oh. 
thought about it, just held up, it missed outside. Didn't miss by much. Chop towards first base, it's gonna tip foul. Just a little slap. Kick foul halfway down. And we got deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here in the bottom of the first inning. Hit foul back. Normally that would have been into the netting, but with the netting flopping down all over the place, that went right through and back. That one breaks down and away. So the count goes full, pitcher against pitcher here. The payoff pitch hit right back to the mound. So Hunter has an easy one, two, three inning. He takes care of two with strikeouts. He takes care of the other one with the assist to the first baseman on the ground ball back to the mound. So both pitchers only face three in the first inning. We've ended the first inning exactly the way we started it. Link Glasgow, nothing. Mask and Ormet, nothing. We start the second e inning dead even. It'll be four, five, and six for Masco. Andrew Gotts, the center fielder, will lead it off against Brett Buckling. Brett gave up a walk in the first inning, but the walk was thrown out when he stole second and overslid the bag and got tagged out by Finnegan at second base. So he only faced three hitters. High for a ball. Down and away for a ball. Puckland mostly played right field. The year before, he, he did some pitching and pitched well. Didn't do a lot of pitching last year. He played a lot of right field. But with Glasgow, with David Bernard and Aaron O'Connor being down and out, they may do it by committee this year. I'm sure Aiden Dow is going to get some work on the mound. He pitched quite a bit last year. Up in the air, behind the plate, and nice job by Buckland. Galizia was having trouble finding it, and Buckland just at the last minute, you could almost hear him say, me, me, and he had a better play in the ball coming to the ball, and Galizia ought to turn around and look over his shoulder. So Buckland helps himself fielding the pop-up. Nick Cantalupo. The right fielder will be the hitter. Down in the turf. I can't say dirt because the only dirt out there is on the mound. Everything is turf in the infield. And it might be everything might be turf in the outfield after a while there. Fisher College and Rich Avery who's runs the show here at Manning and Fraser Field that getting together to raise some money to try and put turf in the outfield as well. That would be great. Fisher has made a lot of contributions to this field. And they're going to have to come up with a few more of the city as well to, with this overhang starting to fall down. and That's back and out of play. And that's not going to come back the way that netting is 
folded. That fish ball stays right there. Chase that high pitch, lines it back. And the count evens it too. Pitching low for a ball. The count goes full, three and two. So once again, a payoff pitch coming up. Call third strike on the inside corner. Can't the loop post. It handcuffed him, I think, right in on the hands. He was taken off the first, hoping he could buy a walk. And they rung him up for the second out, second strikeout. Both second outs in the first and second innings have been strikeouts. One swinging, one called. Joe Kalapinski, the left fielder, will be the hitter. Down and in for a ball. We had the lights on here at Frazier since they were warming up before the game. Lined in the left field for a base hit. So a two out single by Kalapinski is the first hit of the ball game. It'll bring up Adam, Adam Costas, the DH. He's hitting for the second baseman, Hunter DeGeorge. Let's see if they try to get Kalapinski to second base. Bounce at the first. Nice play by Dow to stop that low throw. Shot hopped it. Slicing behind first base, off to the right side, too far away for Dow to go get it. Pretty good lead at first base, Kalapinski. Down and away for a ball. He looks like he's gonna go on this pitch, and he did. Swing and a miss. Got a big jump. And steal second base. You can almost tell by looking at him, he was getting a little antsy, moving ever so close, inching away the bag, a little longer lead. Had all the markings of, I'm going to steal second base, and he did. Call third strike, a little off speed curveball, bites the outside corner. Two strikeouts in the inning. So they get the hit. They get a runner in scoring position. And Buckland gets out of it. He's got three strikeouts in two innings. And once again, Classical has a chance to get on the board first. Four, five, and six for the Rams. 
Tayshawn Anderson, Aiden Dow, Nathaniel Amandaras. Will Hunter will start his second inning of work. Had a fairly easy first inning. Two strikeouts and a ball hit back to the mound. He was involved in all three outs. We mentioned Masco from the Cape Ann League. Masco from the Northeastern Conference League. T.J. Burrell, the coach from Masco, is familiar with the Northeastern Conference. He coached at Swampscott before moving over to Masco. He's been very successful, as has Mike Zukowski at Classical. I'm looking at Glasgow. I, I may miss a couple, but I know Buckland, Anderson, and Dow, Durant were all members of that Babe Ruth team that won the States, won the New Englands, went to the World Series of Babe Ruth out in the Midwest. On the inside corner for a strike. High and tight for a ball. Hit on the ground to short. Big hop for the shortstop. Nice play by the first baseman. The throw for the shortstop, Zenus, was high and sailing away. The first baseman, Aldris, made a very nice play. Went up and got it and made the tag. So the shortstop, Zenus, can say thank you to the first baseman, Aldrich. Anderson is out. The play goes 6-3. to three. That looked like it was going to go... Over the first baseman's head. Aldrich made a very nice play at first base. Aiden Dow is the hitter. One of the few that throws left, bats left. On the corner for a strike. Slicing foul off to the third base side. I was wondering, I looked over, usually there's action going on at Manning Field. It very seldom is it are the two fields not being used, and now the cross is getting ready to go over there as Dow reaches for it and pushes it past third base foul. Hit foul again. You tell it's cold out. Aiden Dow was wearing a mask, like a headpiece, covering, trying to stay warm. Chop to a shot. They got to hurry. They don't get him. Slowly hit, even with a good throw, they'd have it. Dow beat that out for an infield hit. First baseman tried to go reach and get it, but Dow was at first base already. Shortstop had to go way to his left. After Dow hit the ball three or four times past third base, he moved over in the hole towards third base. He had to go way to his left. By the time he straightened out, Dow gets an... Extra step of two being left-handed down that first baseline. 
Yeah, Glasgow has their first base runner. Swing and a miss. Nathaniel Almanderas makes his first swing as a classical ram. He's DHing for the right fielder, James Wilkins. High and tight for a ball. Hit foul back. Again, right over the sagging backstop. A little late swing, that little late breaking ball up and in. Hit that one almost off his chin. Pushed it past first base foul. Protecting the plate with the count one and two. Swing and a miss for strike three. Two way for Brendan Lannon, the left fielder. Dow takes off. It goes out in the center field. Thought about going, but the second baseman hustled and got it. Dow held up at second. So he steals second base. Made the turn like he was going to go to third, but good hustle by the second baseman DeGeorge, who went out into short center field and retrieved the loose ball. So a runner in scoring position with two outs. And now Costig and the catcher wants to talk to his pitcher, Hunter. Hit in the center field for a base hit. That's going to score a run. A big two-out hit. They throw it to the plate. That's going to allow Landon to go to second base. A big two-out hit. Landon gets the first RBI for the Rams. Dow scores the first run. Cal Finnegan, the second baseman, will be the hitter. Landon hustled. He saw the throw going to the plate. It was way off the plate. They almost threw it into the classical dugout. It was way off to the third base side of home plate. Landon easily went to second base. In the air to the right side. To George, the second baseman, will handle it. But the infield hit by Dow, the stolen base pays off. As landing, it's a big two out hit. And Classical gets their first run of the game, and they take their first lead of the game. At the end of two, it's Classical one, Masco nothing. We sat the third inning. Masco will be eight, nine, and one. 
Matt Aldridge, the first baseman, he made that nice play that would have been a little bigger inning for Classical. He went up and got that high throw from shortstop and tagged Anderson out at first base. Chop towards shortstop slowly. They're going to have to hurry. Very nice play by D. Filippo. Had to come a long way behind the mound. It wasn't it that hard. And no wasted effort as he fielded it. He was in the, already in the motion to throw it to Dow. Very nice defensive play by D. Filippo. Looked like always might have a base hit. D. Filippo takes it away. One up, one down in the third for Connor Crowley. The third baseman. Up and away for a ball. Hit on the ground, Deshaun Anderson. Nice play. Went over cut. If that gets by Anderson, it's a base hit. Made the nice play. Good strong throw. Two up, two down. On ground balls to the left side. And Masco is batted around because the leadoff hitter, Will Hunter, will be up for the second time. He walked. He had second base stolen, but he overslid the bag. And Kyle Finnegan made a heads up play and tagged him while he was off the bag. Up and away for a ball. Pop back. That almost came into our lap. It just missed coming in the press box. Through that big hole. With the backstop sagging down. Swing and a miss. He chased that pitch that broke down and away. Nice pitch by Buckland. One, two, the count. Buckland took a little too much time. Hunter asked for time and got it from the umpire. Hit foul back. Looks like the umpire forgot one of his gloves. He's wearing, it's very cold. Everybody's wearing gloves and all bundled up. The umpire's got a glove on his right hand. He's got no glove on his left hand. High and tight for a ball. And again, we got two as well. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And the hitter is number two. So we got deuces all over the place. Thought about it, held up, broke up and away for a ball. Buckland's thrown some pitches through the first three innings. He's full again. Lined in the right field for a base hit. So he takes it the other way. Second hit. For Masco, it comes with two outs in the third. Aaron Zenas struck out swinging his one trip.
We mentioned that Hunter stole second back in the first thing, but Oval slid the bag. Let's see if he tries to get in scoring position again. Down and away for a ball. That's not a good pickoff throw. That's we want you to think that's a good pickoff throw, lobbing it over. Another big jump, easily in with a stolen base. Well, the tying runs at second base here in the top of the third with two outs. The catcher, Pat Costigan, is the on deck hitter. In for strike. Like took something off the curveball, dropped it in. And we got Deuces Wild again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Puck will try to keep the runner close. So it's two balls, two strikes, two outs. And number two is at second base. So again, Deuce is all over the place. Way high. That left his hand high and stayed high all the way through. Hit in the left center field. That's in the gap for a base hit. A two-out double by Zenas. So both teams come up with two out hits. Maskell's hit ties it up at one. Zenas standing on second base with the RBI double. Pat Costigan grounded out second to first as one trip. High for a ball. Down and in for a ball. They throw it down, nowhere near. Getting the bus, they almost threw it in the center field. Filippo had to go to the second base side of second base to get that throw from the catcher. In for a strike on the inside corner. Two on the count to the Masco catcher. Way high for a ball. So it sat out easy enough, two ground balls. Two outs, nobody on. A two out hit, a stolen base, and a two out double. 
And that's ball four. So the walk extends the inning. For Andrew Gotts, who popped up to the pitch of Buckland, his one trip. Down and away for a ball. He's got a huge hole on the right side with Finnegan trying to hold the runner at second. And Dow guiding, almost guiding the line on the, on the first base side. Hit to third, Anderson makes the throw. But Masco gets even. The two out single by Hunter, the stolen base, and the two out double by Zenas gets him the run on the board. First inning that Buckland didn't strike out a, a hitter. And we're back dead even at one apiece. And for classical, it'll be 9, 1, and 2 to start the bottom of the third inning. This is classical and Masco's start of the 2019 season, this interleague game. Masco, the Cape Ann rep, classical Northeastern Conference. And I believe this will be the last year. I don't know how often you'll see Everett, Malden, Medford, Somerville playing against Northeastern Conference teams because they were voted out of the league. Starting next season, starting the football season, Everett was just about got voted back in. All of those four teams all of their sports were in the Northeastern Conference with the exception of Everett football. And Everett was about to enter into the Northeastern Conference football. And he took another vote and they voted the four teams out. And this will be the last year for Revere as well because Revere is going to join those four teams back in what was the, the Greater Boston League. And there's a possibility that Cambridge Rins might be back in that league as well. And that's a shame because it was, Northeastern Conference was a 16-team league and everybody played. It was, it was fair on either side. The competition was virtually even. And you didn't have to go too far to play your games. And I know everybody was afraid of Everett football, but they're going to come back to the pack. You can't stay where they are all the time. This is Kyle Durant, the center fielder. So I wish they had voted them in. It would have been great for the league. Swatted that one. Took us... Late swing and the pitch was way over his head. The count stays 0-2. So they'll play them this year, but I don't know what happens next year because those teams might say, hey, you didn't want us in your league. We're not going to play you. And teams will have to go around try to find some games. Chop to short. Big hop for the shortstop. Nice play by Zenas. No wasted effort. Throws Durant out on the chopper to the shot. One away back to the top of the order. Nico Galizzi, the catcher, struck out swinging, leading off the bottom of the first.
Good off speed curveball dropped in for a strike. That had a little bit of a bite to it. Top foul to the classical dugout. Frazier's been used quite a bit. Glasgow had an exhibition game here. St. Mary's had one. St. Mary's already played uh, one game already. Glasgow's playing their first game. Of course, Fisher College is playing just about every day here. And Tech and English will get into the act as well. Golfs that one to center field. Hit it a long way. Andrew Gotts backs up and makes the play. That was a golf shot by Galizzi. Two up, two down. For Jared DiFilippo, who struck out swinging. Way high and tight. Had a duck out of the way of that one. Down and in for a ball. Swing and a miss. Two one the count. Got his money's worth with the swing, but swung right through it. Line shot to left field. On the run. Nice play by the left fielder. Joe Kalapinski had to go way to his left. And he had to reach across his body. He's left handed. DiFilippo hit it very well, but he lines out to the left fielder for the third out. So for the second inning out of three, Hunter has a one, two, three inning. And we're still dead even at the end of three. It's classical one, Masco one going into the top of the fourth. Five, six, and seven for Masco. Nick Cantalupo was called on on strikes his one trip against Brett Buckland, who'll be starting his Fourth inning of work. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Popped up. Uh, near the classical dugout. Not far enough for Anderson or anybody else to go get it. Just a little pop to the third base side. Pitcher catch a third baseman all going for it. Galizzi, Buckland, and Anderson, nobody could get to it. Wasn't hit that high and almost to the classical dugout, which was a good distance for them to go. So Cantalupo gets a life to count as 0 2. Got a good look at that pitch going outside. Good waste pitch by Buckland with 0 2. Missing low for a ball, the count evens at 2. Hit foul back up in the seats. Back 
Basco brought a few fans in this cold, damp day. Basco brought a couple. Down and in for a ball. So Buckland had him two strikes. Now he's going to come in with a pitch. He'll put him on. Off the bag. He'll reach on the arrow. That was a, Finnegan made a great play to go to his right to get that. Try to make the quick throw, and he drew Dow off the bag. So Cantalupo reaches on the arrow. Puts the go-ahead run at first base with nobody out. Joe Kalapinski got a base hit his first time up. He got the first hit of the game, lining a base hit into left field. He wound up at second with a stolen base, but then Buckling got a strikeout to get out of the inning. Yeah, let's see if Masco was running again. High for a ball. Puckler takes a little walk around the mound. The runner takes off high and tight. In with a stolen base. In for a strike. Nice start by Galizia on a pitch down and away. Keeps the runner at second base. And that's ball four. So a walk on an error, put runs at first and second with nobody out. For Adam Costas, the DA, she's hitting for the second baseman to George. Getting a talking to from TJ Burrell, the coach. Let's see if they play small ball. Trying to move the runners up. We're down near the bottom of the batting order. Costas is the number seven hitter. He was called on on strikes his first at bat. Dow came charging in from first. They were hoping that was going to get the runner at first off the bag. Finnegan was trying to sneak in behind him, but the runner didn't go anywhere. Down and in for a ball. Hey, hey. 
Ashkenoma dugout coming to life in this 1-1 game. With two on and nobody out. Hit in the air to left field. Almost in his tracks. Maybe he took a step, step and a half to his right. Brendan Landon makes the play for the first out. So they didn't try to move the runners up. Matt Aldridge grounded out, shot to first, his one trip. It was a very nice play. Slowly hit by the mound. Filippo made a very nice play throwing him out. In for a strike. Masco trying to get the lead in a 1-1 game. Brett Buckland on the mound trying to shut them out. And keep it one to one. Down and in for a ball. Broke high, stayed high, and outside, and it's two and one. Good pitch on the inside corner, even as the count at two. Lisey wants to talk to his pitcher. The error sat in. Tough play to give Finnegan an error on. He made a great play going to his right, had it, but then the throw to first drew Dow off the bag, allowed the base runner to reach. And then the stolen base and the walk put two on. The flyout got the first out, and now it's two and two to Matt Aldridge, who's the first baseman. For Masco. I stopped by Galizi again. And we got another full count. Again, Buckland's thrown a lot of pitches in the first three and a third innings. The runners take off. The ball's hitting the left field for a base hit. They had everybody going on the 3-2 pitch, and that left a big hole, and Aldridge found it with a base hit. Nice call by T.J. Burrell. It's not 3-2 and two with two outs. There's only one out. But he had everybody running. And it paid off as they had a big hole on the left side. Aldrich drilled it in. And Masco was taking the lead. Down and away for ball two. Connor Crowley, the third baseman, grounded out third to first. Missing down and in, 3 and 0. Oh. Oh. On the corner, first strike. As you would expect, Crowley taking all the way. Buckland fakes on a second. He gets Kalapinski diving back. It's 
swing and a miss. He was backing away, swinging at that one. So it was three and oh, it's now three and two. See if they go again. Parkland trying to keep them close. They ran on three and two and it worked to perfection. They don't go. The ball's tapped to second base. They only have one play. They throw Crowley out. It's not a bunt, but it works the same. So the runners move to second and third. That takes away the force at any base. They'll have to go to first. Will Hunter is the hitter. He's perfect. He walked. He singled and scored the first run. But at that point, tied the ball game up. Good curveball for a strike. Down and away for a ball. So this is pitcher against pitcher. Hunter could really help himself here. It's two to one Masco, but the second and third, a base hit would really be a gift for Masco. Hits it foul out of play off to that right side down that grassy knoll. And the count is one and two. Parkland trying to stop the bleeding here in the fourth inning. Hunt, Hunter trying to help himself and push that lead a little further. Masco. Parkland started off thinking that was a strike. He was trying to walk off just a little bit high. And we got Deuce as well. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Masco with their second run. So again, we got deuces all over the place. It's a very big hitter for both teams. Hit in the air at the short right field. It's dropped. And two runs are going to score. Finnegan called everybody off. They get out of the way, and he dropped the ball. Two errors in the inning. Both very costly, but especially that last one. Looked like Buckland was out of the inning. Both coaches, Mike Sukowski out to talk to his pitcher, T.J. Burrell talking to hitter, base runners. So Masco reaps the harvest here. An error started the inning, and now an error... Pop up, easy out, they're out of the inning. Right fielder, first baseman, second baseman, everybody there. Finnegan called everybody off, they got out of the way, and he just dropped it. The runner takes off, the ball's hit foul. Got a big jump, he had second base stolen. Hunter stole, after walked, he stole second, but overslid the bag and attacked out. After he got the base hit, he stole second. 
and scored the run. Now we got a big jump off the back there. He had second base stolen again. Zenas got a big double knocking Hunter in. Another big jump and another stolen base as they throw it into center field. Zena struck out swinging his first trip, but he lined a double in the left center field that knocked in the first run to tie the game. So he's one for two with an RBI, and he's up there now with a runner in scoring position. Three unearned runs in the inning. Puckley deserved a better fate. High for a ball. Swing and a miss. They tag him out. But the damage is done. Two errors in the inning. Three hundred and runs. They send seven to the plate. They score three runs. They break the one-one tie. They only got one hit in the inning, but it was a base hit that knocked in a run. And then the pop-up that was dropped got two more. Buckland picked up his fourth strikeout, but two big errors in the inning. And we're halfway through the ball game, and Masco got their first lead in the game at, at four to one. So Classical's got their work cut out for him. So they'll have three, four, and five. Brett Buckland, Deshaun Anderson, Aiden Dow, to face Will Hunter, who will be in the lead for the first time on the mound. It was his pop-up that was dropped that brought the two runs in that gave him a lot of breathing room here now in the game. The breeze picks up and it just gets a lot colder here at Fraser Field. A lot of brave fans still hanging around, all bundled up, including my camera people. It'll be pitcher against pitcher, standing the bottom of the fourth. Brett Buckland bounced to the pitcher his one trip. Buckland on the short end of this. It should, should still be one to one. Should get out of the inning unscathed. And error started it, and then the big error, allowing two runs to score. And all of a sudden, Classical finds themselves down four to one. Chop to third. Long throw across the diamond. Buckland tried to dive head first in the bag, but they call him out. Crowley made the long throw over to the first baseman, Aldridge, for the first out. One pitch, one out. Tayshawn Anderson grounded out shot to first. That was the play where the throw was high. It looked like it was going over the first baseman's head. All just made a nice catch and tagged Anderson before he got to the bag. And it turned out big because that's the inning that Classical got their run. They got two hits after that. Took something off, dropped it on the inside corner. Quickly, it's 0-2.
way wide for a ball. Try to put something a little extra on that fastball and pulled it way wide off to the first base side. On the inside corner for strike three. Good fastball, tied the innocent up, couldn't do anything with it except take it. And they ring him up for the second out. Fourth strikeout for Hunter. Aiden Dow got a base hit and scored the run. He got an infield hit. Popped up. Long run for the third baseman. It's going to go out of play. Dow hit the ball between the shortstop and second base. Shortstop Zenas had to go way to his left. By the time he straightened up to make the throw, Dow and beat it at first base. He scored on Landon's two-out hit. Those two hits in the inning are the only two hits that Classical has in the game. And they're the only two base runners Classical have in the game. As Dow takes the pitch for strike two. Hit foul again off to the left side. Now he's got that headgear that football players wear under their helmets trying to keep himself warm in this bitterly cold night. They did say that spring was here. Down and away for a ball. Hopefully it's going to start to warm up. Awful difficult to play games in this kind of weather. Standing around. Most of the time you're saying, please don't hit the ball to me because I'm so cold, I probably won't be able to throw it. Breaking ball drops into the turf. And we got another deuce as well. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Hit the third, another long throw across the diamond. Crowley with another nice play. Dow goes the other way. Crowley makes his second play in the inning. Third one, two, three inning for Hunter of the four he's gone through. We've completed four here at Fraser Field. That three run fourth inning, the difference for Masco, it's F Masco four, Classical one at the end of four. Pat Costigan, the catcher, will lead it off from the fifth. For Masco, three, four, and five in the batting order to face Buckland. Good fastball for a strike. Costigan is grounded a second and walked. So he's 0 for 1 officially. High for a ball. Hit to the right side. Finnegan, nice job. Way to his left. Had to go a long way to go get that one. And that's the second time he's thrown Costigan out. In regards, popped to the pitcher and ground to the third. In for a strike.
down and away, it goes to the backstop. And the count evens at one. Right back, a little top. Looked like he got that one way down the bottom of the bat and just hit a little soft half line, half pop up back to the pitcher Buckland. Second time he's gone out to Buckland. Two up, two down in the fifth. Nick Cantalupo started that. Three run inning, reaching on the air, and now he gets hit into the right center field. On for the second time. He reached on the air, and that was one of two errors in the inning that allowed Masco to score three and grab the lead. So he keeps the fifth inning going with the base hit. Joe Pal Kalipinski is perfect. He singled, walked, and scored. So he's one for one with a run scored. On the corner for a strike. <laughs> what a fitting in time that perfectly. It looked like a base hit in the right center field. Waited by this time, went high in the air and speared the line drive. Nice job by Finnegan. Omasco gets a two out single, but it's wasted as the runner was held at first. We'll move into the bottom half of the fifth. Uh, Classical's gonna go to work if they wanna get back on this one. They trail it four to one. It'll be six, seven, and eight for the Rams. Nathaniel Almendarez. Only a sophomore. He's the DH, hitting for the right fielder, Wilkins. He'll be facing Hunter for the second time. He struck out, swinging his first trip. The lights go on now over at Manning Field. I thought maybe they were just practicing, but I guess they're going to have a game lacrosse. Two gorgeous facilities. There are colleges who would like to have these two places. That's why a lot of times people come in here and they Think is this a special game, the baseball game being played on this time? And people who haven't been here before, you say no. The Tech English Classical St. Mary's play here all the time. Low for a ball. Inside and tight. Two on the count to the Ram DH. Hits it foul off to the right side. The count evens at two.
just hung high. Good curveball. Count goes full. Finds it foul. And we'll do it again at three and two. <laughs> Missing inside. First walk given up by Hunter. We said he gave up two hits in the second inning when Klaus got their run. Those are the only two base runners. He retired seven in a row before that walk. Down and in for a ball. Brendan Landon hit a solid single between third and short at the left field. Knocking in the first run, so he's one for one with an RBI. A late swing on that one. <coughs> one one the count to the Ram left fielder. High and tight, two and one. In for strike, he was accounted two. Hit off the third baseman. He only has one play at first. Crowley stayed with it. Knocked it down. Almanderas moves over to second base. One away, Cal Finnegan popped up to the second baseman his one trip. He made that nice play on... Sagging the line drive. Ending the top of the inning. Tied a butt, pushed it foul. Hit the second base. That'll push the runner over. To George, over to Aldrich for the out, four to three. Klasko would love to get this run home. Kyle Durant is the hitter. He bounced out to shortstop, his one trip. Hit off the pitcher, deflects to the second baseman, and they throw him out. What a tough break. That was up the middle, a base hit and a run. The play actually goes one to four to three. And if Cal Durant didn't have bad luck, he wouldn't have any luck at all. He lined shot right up the middle, base hit all over it. And RBI, he hits the pitcher, pops to the second baseman. And they throw him out at first, ending the inning. So Classical comes close, but they come up empty. We're through five here at Frazier Field in this non-league game. 
Mask Enormous 4, Classical 1. As we start the 6th, it'll be the bottom 3 in the order for Masco. Adam Costas will look to get a started. He was called on a strikes and flied out to left field. So he's 0 for 2 against Buckland, who will be starting his 6th inning of work. And we mentioned he deserved a better fate. High for a ball. Swing and a miss. Buckler's given up five base hits. He spaced them well. He's only walked two. One of them was thrown out when he stole second and overslid the bag. Put those two big errors by Classical in the fourth inning, the difference, one side of the inning, the other one, after a run was in, the pop-up would have ended the inning, was dropped, and two runs scored. And that's the difference, four to one, Masco. That three run, fourth inning. Hit foul out of play. Off to the right side. Line foul off to the right side. Once again, we got a payoff pitch coming up. Hit hard right to the second baseman. Finnegan throws it away. Had plenty of time, just wound up and fired it past Dow at first base. Third error in the game by Classical. Gives Masco a runner at second base. And I don't know who the pinch runner is. They're running. Costas at second base, but I, I didn't pick up the number. Matt Aldridge has grounded a shot, got a base hit, knocking in a run and scored a run in that fourth inning. He had the solid hit when the count was three and two. And they had the runners going, and he hit it between third and shot with everybody moving and easily knocked in the run. Hit foul off to the right side. High for a ball. Hit up in the air. Dow with a long run over by the first base dugout. Nice play. He had to come a long way. Makes the nice play right in front of the Masco dugout. Down one of those three sport athletes at classical football, baseball, basketball. Corner Crowley is grounded out twice. One, first time to third, last time to second. 
pitches high for a ball. He's made a couple of nice plays at third base. Popped up. Finnegan almost didn't have to move. So an error, and then two infield pop-ups. Makes it two outs and runner at second. And Will Hunter, the pitcher, he's hit the trifecta. He walked, singled and scored, and reached on an error. His error was big in that fourth inning because it was a pop-up in short right field. It was dropped, and it wound up scoring two runs. So he's one for two with a run scored, but he's been on base three times, three different ways. Down and away for a ball. Lined in the left field for a base hit. Waving the runner home. The throw coming to the plate. Not in time. Another big two out hit in the game. Hunter helps himself with the base hit. Another under and run, but Masco will take it. Landon made a strong throw. Wasn't too far from picking the runner off coming home. Hunter winds up at second base on the throw of the plate. Aaron Zenas struck out swinging, doubled in a run, struck out swinging. So he's one for three with an RBI. And again, an error comes up to bite classical. Little late swing, and he pops it right into right field. Pitch was way inside, stepping away, and just went the other way with it and dumped it in the short right field for a base hit. A little excuse me swing. Gets him a second RBI. Hunter scores his second run. Two more unearned runs for Masco. Line. Finnegan with another great play at second base. Taking a base hit away from Costigan. He went way to his left, dove, and speared it for the out. But the damage is already done. Again, instead of three in a row retired by Buckland, the error leading off the inning extended the inning. And then back-to-back -back hits by Hunter and Zenas get them two more runs. The two hits come with two outs after the error. So three costly errors in the game have given Masco five runs and they lead it six to one. As it starts to get a little bit damp, looks like rain is starting to come down a little bit. As we move into the bottom of the sixth, it'll be the top of the order for the Rams. Will Hunter will start his sixth inning of work. He certainly helped himself out. Been on base four times, knocked in a run, scored two. And the time he reached on an error was huge because 
it would have been the third out instead it turned into two runs. So five unearned runs by Maskell, and they lead it six to one. It'll be the top of the order for Classical. Nico Galizzi has struck out and hit a solid shot right at the center fielder. Hunter has given up only two base hits and walk one, only three base runners. Hit to right field, coming on. Can't make the play, it bounces by him. He started back on the play. The right fielder, and then he had to come on, couldn't make the diving catch, and Galizia's got a double. Jared DiFilippo struck out and hit a shot into left center field. And Kalapinski, the left fielder, made a nice running catch. Hunter had retired seven in a row before he walked Amadeiras to lead off the fifth. He retired three more in a row, giving him 10 out of 11 before now giving up the double. A little off-speed curveball bites the outside corner, and it's 0-2. Missing low for a ball. Swing and a miss, he gets him. Five strikeouts for Hunter. Brett Buckland, the pitcher, bounced to the pitcher and bounced to third base. Hit the shot. Nice play by Zenas. One pitch gets Buckland on the ground to the shot. Two away for Deshaun Anderson. Thrown out by the shortstop on a nice play by the first baseman with the tag as the throw was way high. Last time he was called out on strikes. Her ball breaks late for a ball. On the corner for a strike. They check with the base up and see if he's swung and they say no. Hit foul up in the seats, right over masking on it. Fans head. They moved up underneath with the rain coming down. 
Not raining hard, but just enough to be a pain in the neck. Time was called, the ball got away from the bullpen area down in right field. Two as well, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Inside and tight, we go full three and two. Late swing, uh, hits it off just past the Masco dugout. And we'll do it again at three and two. Hopefully the weather's gonna warm up a little bit, especially with the marathon coming up and school vacation coming up for the kids. Hit back to, by the mound. And they call him out at first base. Aldris went high in the air. Mike Sikowski is going to challenge it. Looked like Hunter was going to make the play. He slipped and fell. It went to the shortstop. They threw him out at first base. He was off the bag, but then he came back down and got his foot in. And the base umpire is going to check with the plate umpire now. And they're discussing it. Anderson now just now got up, and he's out at first base. So the leadoff double goes by the boards. Hunter retired seven in a row, walked a batter, retired three in a row, gave up the double to Galizzi, and has retired three in a row. So he's retired 13 out of 15, giving up only the three base hits. We've completed six hit classicals out of their last three outs. Masco leading it 6-1 to one going into the seventh inning. Seventh and final inning. Four, five, and six, the middle of the order for Masco. Andrew Gotts has hit it to the pitcher twice. Sam was in between. He grounded out third to first. One was a pop-up in front of the plate. The other one was a little soft half-line drive, half-pop back to Buck Buckland. And he gets thrown out by Anderson. Hit in the air. Landon coming on. Dives can't get it to it. And diving into second base, they tag him out. He overslid the bag. Finnegan tagged him out, that's the second time. So Gauss gets a base hit, and then he's out seven to four. He had a little soft pop. Landon made a great try, couldn't get to it. It dropped for a hit. Head first dive into second base, overslid the bag, and second time in the game that Finnegan has tagged out Masco on a play that overslid the bag. One was on a steal, this one was on a base hit. So he gets credit for a single, and he's out at second base. Nick Cantalupo struck out, reached on there and scored and singled. Fouled off the catcher. Well, Cantalupo was one for three. Scored a run. Reaching on the arrow was in the fourth inning when Classical made those two errors and Maskell kind of broke it open getting three runs. That misses for ball four. Buckland has walked three, but he spaced them out. One in the first, one in the fourth. Now one in the seventh. One, two, three, 
one of the walks scored, but it was unearned. One of those three runs that on the move, the runner going. Aiden Dow runs out of real estate. He got all the way over to the gate, the fence over there behind first base. Couldn't go any further. The ball went into that little grassy knoll back there. Cantalupo was off and running on the pitch. Kalapinski has singled, walked and scored, and lined out to the second baseman. Finnegan made a really nice play taking a base hit away. So he's one for two with a run scored. They tag the runner, and that's all they'll get. Classical, they're going to call it, they're going to call a runner interference. I don't think there was any possible way they could have thrown the runner out at first base. But they're going to call interference and call it a double play. So the runner at first is called out for interference. T.J. Burrell is questioning it. Finger looked up and said, I would have had a play at first base. There was no way he was going to make a play at first base. The ball wasn't hit that hard. Finnegan had to go and tag the runner. The runner would have got there easily. So they get the hit, but it turns out to be a double play. The hit, oh, it's a strange inning. They hit. Overslid second base and got tagged out. The walk got tagged at second, and he wind up with a put out. I, we have a new pitcher for, for Masco, and I thought it was number 13. But I don't see a number 13. It's hard to pick up the numbers with these uniforms. So Buckland goes seven innings. So Eric Sibic. Eric Sibic is the new pitcher. Buckland goes seven. Gives up six runs, five of them unearned. He should be in a 1-1 tie. He gives up eight base hits. He walked three. And struck out four. And the three big errors in the game amounted to five unearned runs and that's the difference in the game. The pitcher Hunter who's no longer on the mound goes six, gives up one run it's earned, three base hits, walk one and those are the only three base runners. He struck out five. And unless Classical comes up with a miracle finish, Hunter is going to get his first win. And Maskell's going to go to 1-0. and oh. And Buckland's going to lose a very hard game. He pitched very well. Deserved a better fate. As I said, Classical should have a chance to win the game here. It should be 1-1. One one. Aiden Dow singled and scored in the second. Grounded out third to first this last time up. And Civic on the mound. 
Line to the left field for a base hit, left center field for a base hit. Dow's got his second hit. And each and every time he's going the other way. Nathaniel Almanderas struck out, swinging, and walked. Ooh, they're very dark gray clouds. The cold, the damp, and now the heavy mist. It's been a miserable day at the ballpark. For the fans, the players, the umpires, certainly all of us up here in the press box. Curveball is in for a strike. Had Almondir is backing away, and it's 0-2. And, that one goes to the backstop. One, two, the count. Dow moves over to second base. Wide for a ball, even as a count at two. Brendan Landon, the left fielder on deck. Wide again. So he was ahead of Almanderas. Now he's got to come over the pitch and put him on. Just about set to throw the ball. It took a long time, and Hamadiris asked for time and got it. And just as they called time, Civic was about to pitch the baseball. Little excuse me swing. He threw it way inside. Might have been ball four. He backed away, but it hit the bat. Rolled out a first base foul. And we'll do it again at three and two. Chopped out in front of the plate. Sybil will make the easy play over a first. Dow will move over to third. Only the second runner to make third base since Dow scored the run in the second inning. Brendan Landon singled in a run, grounded out third to first. Good fastball for a strike. <laughs> 
Down and away, one on one. Swings through it, it goes off to catch his glove, and Dow's going to score a run. So that'll be a pass ball. Osco gets their second run. Both runs scored by Dow. That was way inside. Landon swung right through it, it just went. Tipped off the catcher, cost against Glover, went to the backstop. Dow scored easily. Swung through it, and the bat went almost all the way to third base. It went by the classical dugout. And the classical's down to their last out. Kyle Finnegan is the hitter. I don't know what the umpires could be questioning. There's no question he swung at the pitch. Finnegan has popped the second and grounded the second. So he had a thing with the joy as the second baseman. Going to him twice. Chopped off his foot. Foul out in front of the plate. Costinger was getting set to make the play. And the ball get, they throw it out of play. The ball got wet. As it's been steadily drizzling for the last couple of innings. Just to add to the miserable conditions we started with, with the ice cold and the damp. Swing and a miss. Class goes down to their last strike. Down and in for a ball. The one-two pitch. Wide for a ball. And here we are in the bottom of the seventh, and we got deuces wild again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And the hitter again is number two, so and Klaus will score their second run, so we got deuces again all over the place. Chop, foul, past third base. We'll do it again at two and two. So. so Hunter finished up retiring seven in a row. 13 of the last 15 giving up a walk and a double that led off the fifth and sixth and both didn't do much. Hit up the middle. And they throw it away. Finger will reach on the error. And that extends the inning for Kyle Durant. And they're going to call the game right now. I don't know why you would do it with two outs in the bottom of the seventh after you went through all this. But now they say the conditions are bad. And he probably threw that ball away because the ball was wet. And Mike Zukowski's not happy. 
he's talking to the umpires, but the umpire said, that's it, and that's going to be the end of the ball game. So Masconorma is going to get a win in, in their first game. Classical is going to go to 0 and 1. Classical get on the board first. Dow got an infield hit, stole second and scored on Landon's two out single. Masco answered back with two outs. Hunter got a base hit, stole second and scored on Zenas's two out double. It was one to one, and then Masco put it away more in the top of the fourth, scoring three on two big classical errors. An error led the inning, a walk, an RBI single by Aldridge. And then a big error on a pop-up by Hunter, knocked in two. It was four to one, and for all intents and purposes, that was the end of the game. They added two more in the sixth inning. Again, an error led the inning. After two quick outs, the inning would have been over. The pitcher, Hunter, got a base hit, knocking in a run, went to second on the throw of the plate, and then scored on Zenas's RBI single to make it six to one. Glasgow got a run in the seventh. Dow got his second hit leading off. Went to second on a wild pitch. Third on a ground ball. And he scored on a pass ball. That got by the catcher to the backstop. And that was the final score, 6-2. to two. Hunter, the pitcher, was on base four times. Knocked in a run, scored two. Aaron Zenas had a double and a single and knocked in two. <coughs> to lead... Mask and Norman, Aldrich also got a base hit, uh, knocking in a run. For Classical, Dow had two base hits, scored both runs. Landon got a base hit, knocking in the run. The only other base runners were a walk to Almendaris leading off the fifth, and Finnegan reaching on the error with two outs in the seventh before the game was called. So Classical only had four base runners. Two hits, a walk, and a, and a mask and arm at error. They bunched the two hits in the second inning. Landon's getting second hit, knocking in the run. Dow gets two hits and scores two runs. Buckland pitched a very nice game, deserved a better fate. Five unearned runs, three big errors for Classical, two big ones in the fourth when Maskell scored three runs, and that was the difference in the game. So Maskell will go to 1-0 and on the season as the Cape Ann is going to knock off the Northeastern Conference. Classical will go to 0-1, the final score. Masco 6, Classical 2. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm John Hoffman saying we'll see you next time.